Over the last few years, research has uncovered a specific kind of autoimmunity that tends to exist in illnesses like long COVID and myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. Now that autoimmunity can explain a lot of the symptoms that occur in these conditions, including the characteristic exercise intolerance and post-exertional malaise. But there is also a treatment that is used in Germany, which is capable of improving or even removing this autoimmune problem. That treatment is called immunoabsorption, and I am going to tell you all about it in today's video. But first, if you are new to this channel, this is a place where I aim to discuss simplified explanations of the research into ME-CFS and long COVID so that you can be more empowered into understanding these conditions better. It's also a place where I aim to share the various treatment strategies that I have tried in order to improve my condition. If that sounds good to you, please do like and subscribe. So I've done a whole previous video about the nature of the autoimmunity in ME-CFS. That video is now linked above and it goes into detail about how this autoimmunity is different from uh, the autoimmunity that exists in other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis because in ME-CFS the autoimmunity is not attacking or destroying the body, it is rather uh, creating a kind of set of disruptive signals that are interfering with normal bodily processes. And I talk about the specific autoimmune problems that are more associated with ME-CFS and the symptoms that they cause. But suffice to say in this video, the problem is centered around something called a functional autoantibody. These are little autoimmune substances that are capable of blocking the normal activity of cell receptors. And because they block that activity, they're able to disrupt healthy physiological functioning. So they're kind of best thought of as a sort of negative hormone or something that is uh, able to block, create a, a blocking signal of normal processes in the body. So it stands to reason that if someone has these autoantibodies and the more of them they have, the more symptoms they have, if you had a treatment that could actually reduce the number of autoantibodies, you would potentially improve your symptoms and functionality. And that is where the treatment immunoadsorption comes in. Now let's just think about the name there for a moment. Immunoabsorption literally means to absorb the immune system. You are actually taking the uh, aspects of the immune system out of the body. And in this case, this involves taking out the functional autoantibodies. So immunoabsorption is a blood washing procedure. It occurs in dialysis centers. It's a conventional treatment. Now it only happens in Germany, but what it involves is a line being put in one arm, uh, being taken out of that arm. It goes into a filter and a special machine. Uh, the blood is separated. Um, the plasma and the red blood cells are separated. So the red blood cells are not filtered, only the plasma is filtered. The plasma goes in then to an immunoabsorption column. And, and at that point, the autoantibodies are removed. And then once the, uh, the blood is filtered, it comes back uh, into the other arm. So the whole thing goes in a kind of loop. There's just a tiny amount of blood outside of the body at any one time uh, and over the process of the treatment the, the, the autoantibodies are taken out. Now these autoantibodies actually are not specific to ME-CFS, they exist in other conditions as well and there are many kinds of autoantibodies. So this is a history with a long treatment in Germany for other conditions. Uh, serious autoimmune problems like myasthenia gravis, or even conditions like heart failure in which there can be an autoimmune component. But it was about six years ago that someone had the idea of actually trying to use this in ME-CFS, in which there are these increased functional autoantibodies. So let's now talk in a little more detail as to how the treatment actually works, because you may actually be wondering why would taking autoantibodies out of the blood have any effect on someone's functionality or symptoms? Because the autoantibodies that are causing a problem are not in the blood. They're in the tissues of the body. They're in the muscles. They're in the nervous system. They're in the heart. They're in the blood vessels. So why would just taking them out of the blood make any difference at all? And the reason for that is the body likes uh, things to be kept in balance. And it's no different when it comes to these autoantibodies. 
So the brain is always sensing how many autoantibodies are there in the bloodstream and how many autoantibodies are there in the tissues. And if there's a reduction of autoantibodies in the blood, the body will, in its wisdom, want to keep a balance. So it will release itself the autoantibodies that are in the tissues. So you take some out from the blood, body goes, hmm, okay, we need to keep this in balance. It releases the autoantibodies from the blood vessels, from the muscles, whatever, into the blood. And therefore, by through the process of that release, the function in the tissues can begin to improve because you're reducing the burden. And then once you have those released autoantibodies into the blood, well, then you can repeat the immunoabsorption procedure, take those ones out, then the body has to release more autoantibodies from the tissues. And so by this process of dilution over several treatments, you actually dramatically reduce the number of autoantibodies in the tissues, thereby improving functionality. And this leads us to the next question, how many treatments do people need? And the normal recommended number of treatments is somewhere between four and five. And it's also done over a relatively short period of time. In some cases, people do the treatments over a week, in others over two, two and a half or three weeks. But it's kept in a quite short time frame because these autoantibodies do regenerate. And the idea is to kind of get the upper hand on them so as to really reduce the overall autoimmune burden. So what is the aim of this treatment? At the end of it all, you've not actually stopped the reason why the autoantibodies are being created in the first place. They will come back. You're not changing the immune system activity directly. What you're doing is you're simply removing the autoantibodies that have built up that are already there. So the aim of the treatment really is that by removing the autoantibodies that are there, you improve the function of the body dramatically. Once the body can sense that it has improved, that the burden has been reduced significantly, the hope is that it will downregulate this excessive autoimmune production of autoantibodies because the body is now more at ease. So it doesn't need to, it's under less stress. It reduces the autoimmune response. That's the big hope. And so in that case, even though the autoantibodies will come back, they will come back at a lower level and the signal will not be so disruptive and the body will be able to be more functional. However, this is not guaranteed. Some people may feel initially much better and then the autoantibodies come back and they're back where they started or they maintain some improvements but not others. So this is a risk that really uh, people have to take. Now let's move on to the different treatment options. Now I was actually offered this treatment when I was in Germany for my HELP apheresis blood washing procedure which is a different kind of blood washing procedure which is more concerned with removing microclots from the blood. My video all about that is now linked above. But I was offered immunoabsorption because I came back positive for many of the autoantibodies associated with ME-CFS. So that's how I know a fair bit about all of this. I didn't choose to take the treatment at that point. Um, but I was able to ask a lot of questions about it. And so when it comes to the treatment options, there are a couple. There are different kinds of filters and uh, one of them filters a lot more blood than the other. So the one that is more potentially effective, at least in one sense, is called the Miltenyi filter. And this is capable of filtering twice the volume of plasma or even two and a half times the volume of plasma in a single session. So that means you'll be filtering uh, five liters of plasma, even six liters of plasma over the course of a treatment. Plasma volume is normally around 2.5 liters. So that could be maximally effective, but on the flip side, it's also going to be maximally taxing. It's going to be much more draining on someone and potentially could risk um, a, a worsening of symptoms because it's more of a burden on the body as a treatment. The other kind of filter is called the Diamed filter. And this has a much more modest aim of just filtering 2.5 liters of plasma, i.e. doing the plasma volume just once. And so even though it may not be as effective, it would probably be far less taxing. So in my own situation, I would probably choose the less taxing option because I do believe in not overburdening an already overburdened body. Now, despite all of that, the cost between these two options is very similar. The Miltenyi is 2,600 euro per treatment and the Diamed 
is €2,500 per treatment. And of course, this is the very bad news because unless you've won the lottery recently or you have a lot of spare cash, this is a very expensive treatment. Remember, you need about four or five treatments altogether, so you're looking at somewhere between 10 and 12,500 euro for the treatment. Anyway, so if the cost doesn't put you off or if you can raise the money somehow and you want to go for it, what about the risks? Is this a safe procedure? So in general, immunoabsorption is regarded as a safe procedure. Uh, however, there are some risks. In particular, people can have a, um, a, an allergic reaction to aspects of uh, various substances that are being used in the filter. And this would usually happen during a treatment. So you would get an, an antihistamine injected straight away. Sometimes people have a drop in blood pressure because of the blood that's going out of you. So you have a, a drop and people might feel faint. Um, because it is a blood filtering procedure, sometimes other components of the plasma could be mistakenly taken out. So some um, electrolyte balance or things like fibrinogen, which is a, a clotting factor, or albumin, which is important in maintaining blood volume. These things can go low uh, during a treatment. So they require careful monitoring before and after. So ideally, the clinic that you are using would be able to have a quick blood test before and after to look into whether or not these levels have changed in any dangerous way. They probably will change a little bit, but that should be something the body can deal with. But in general, the treatment is very safe. And now I'm going to talk about a study that was done uh, into the use of immunoabsorption in ME-CFS patients. Now, this study was done back in 2018. And it had the title, Immunoabsorption to Remove Beta-2 Adrenergic Receptor Antibodies in Chronic Fatigue Syndrome CFS slash ME. And it was done by Professor Carmen Scheibenbogen et al. at Charité University Berlin. And what they did is they took 10 patients with ME-CFS who had elevated autoantibodies and they treated them with five immunoabsorption procedures actually over the course of pretty much just a week. So it was quite an intensive procedure. And I believe that they were using the filter that was filtering twice the plasma volume. So how did the patients do in this study? Let's read about the results. So three patients reported improvements of fatigue and other symptoms for at least 12 months. So that's a much more sustained improvement. Two patients had only short improvement lasting for one week in one case, and six weeks in the other. And two patients improved for several months following initially getting worse after the treatment. Patient eight had the most remarkable course. While she could hardly walk due to severe muscle fatigue before immunoabsorption, she could walk several hundred meters at the last day. After transient worsening of symptoms, she then completely recovered for seven weeks. That's quite remarkable. Patient six had improvement of fatigue and cognitive symptoms for six weeks and went back to work, but then relapsed with severe post-exertional malaise and disease worsening for six months. Two patients had short improvement of symptoms during immunoabsorption with complete disappearance of immune symptoms and almost complete resolution of all symptoms in, in another case. But after immunoabsorption, both patients deteriorated following a respiratory tract infection and patient two had a fluctuating course thereafter. Patients three, seven, and 10 did not improve during immunoabsorption. So what we can see from this is that the picture is rather mixed and it really speaks to the risk that I talked about earlier. You just don't know how your body is going to respond. You will remove the autoantibodies, yes, but will they then come back at the same level? Will the body still be producing them at the same level? In the which case, you probably won't get a sustained improvement. So in this case, we had three patients who had a very good improvement from the procedure and they had a longer term shift in their functionality, while the others had a more variable course. Now this study concluded that the positive results uh, within uh, some patients, even if it was just short term, does show that autoantibodies play a causal role within the symptomatology of ME-CFS. And it also shows us that there does exist a treatment option that can give a rapid onset of efficacy. And this is interesting because when we think about how people talk about improving from ME-CFS, you know, in the YouTube sphere, it's always about tiny improvements, little by little by little. But what this shows us is that there can exist uh, treatment options that might have more dramatic 
indeed overnight improvements in some people. And this is really important. This is what we need. We need treatments like this that can dramatically improve people's quality of life as they try and work towards full recovery. Because ME-CFS involves lots of different burdens. You have autoimmunity, you've got autonomic dysfunction, you've got low blood volume, you've got cellular issues, you've got microclotting, you've got all these different burdens. And what we want are conventional treatments that can come along and remove one of the burdens and then the body goes, huh, you know, it relaxes, it's, it's able to function better. And then this helps the body to spiral upwards towards health. In an ideal world, it's not something you should have to do all on your own. We need these conventional treatments. So all in all, this was a positive uh, study which did show an improvement in symptoms and that there really is something going on with these autoantibodies. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna do something a little different, but nevertheless still related to immunoabsorption. We've talked about this study, but what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pick out some anecdotal evidence from various discussion threads on, online, um, people who've tried immunoabsorption, and I'm going to collate their experience and I'm gonna talk about uh, what kinds of improvements or side effects or what people thought about the treatment in general, so as to give a more lived experience account from a patient perspective of what this treatment is like and what it can achieve. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please leave your thoughts and questions down below. I, of course, had a, an interview with a, a, a patient, Steve, who went and did immunoabsorption and we talked about his experience. That's linked up above right now. If you've had immunoabsorption and you'd like to be interviewed on the channel about how it went for you, I'd love to hear from you. So I've got my information box and my website uh, is listed there, patrickusher.com. So do drop me a line and we could arrange a chat. So that's it and we'll be in touch in the next video.